there's a wonderful conservation community here in Jackson and I think a lot of people are interested in not only what's going on here in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem but also in Alaska. Florian Schultz is a wildlife and nature photographer who believes that he can inspire conservation efforts from the powerful images that he captures in the wild. Schultz will be presenting some of his photographs that he's taken in the Arctic at 7.30 p.m. on Monday at the Center for the Arts. He'll also be discussing an imminent threat that faces the Arctic region. I had a chance to sit down with Schultz for a few minutes and learn a little bit more about why he spent time in the Arctic and why he wants to tell people all about the region. Arctic is one of the most remote and wild places left in North America. And uh, ever since I came from Germany for the first time, I was looking for those wild places. And the Arctic was on the top of my list because it was the place most out there. And it's really hard to get to there. You had to always use bush planes and, and get uh, to these remote locations, you know, in different methods, like going down streams with river rafts. And so that's why I had so much curiosity for the area. In total, I spent probably over 15 months by now in the Arctic over the past 10 years, camping at minus 35 below. It got really bad. Uh, sometimes with, for example, traveling with Inuit uh, families, we would get in little shelters. They're more like hunting shacks or hunting cabins somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Metal that you would touch, you would immediately stick to it. Um, you had to be careful with the camera gear. If you press the camera against your nose, you would you know, be glued to the metal on, on the camera. What was really special is that the, car the caribou, they were in the middle of the migration, but they have their calves as they're moving across the Arctic. So a lot of the, the calves, they were just one or two days old. And they had to swim across the freezing river right you know, at that, that young age of just a day or two. And, and one of the times my wife, Emil, she found one of the little calves trapped in a, in a hole, in, in, in a mud hole where he couldn't climb out because it was so slippery from all the, the many caribous moving across the river, shaking off their fur. And so the calf was just laying there, it had no more energy. And I remember how she said, we gotta do something about it, we gotta rescue this little calf. And I was very hesitant because I see myself as someone who just observes and documents with a camera and doesn't interfere with nature. And, and then that moment though, we couldn't do it in any different way. Um, because Emil said that she saw the mother walking around on the other side of the willows and she, she was really frantic, the caribou mother, because she had lost her calf. So I decided to pick up that little guy and she carried it over to where this mother was searching for the, for the little guy. And she set it down and for the first moment the calf actually thought, you know, oh, I'm going to follow Emil, my wife now. But then she heard the call of the, of the actual mother and, and they uh, ran, touched noses, reunited. And that was one of the most uh, wonderful experiences uh, out there. There are a lot of questions about Arctic oil drilling offshore um, north of Alaska. And, and I think this is a really problematic issue because if we think back of the um, oil accident, the disaster in the Gulf of Mexico just last year, um, in an area that had incredible infrastructure, you know, rescue crews could get in there very quickly, cleanup crews could get in there. That's all very different in the Arctic. You have to imagine an area that can be under severe storms, it's in complete darkness several months out of the year. Um, the ice, you know, that, that builds up over the winter months can be a hazard. And there's no known method to clean up an oil spill in frozen water. It's really important for me as a photographer is to bring images of the far Arctic um, to, the, to the broad American public because many people have no idea of the landscapes, of the wildlife that can be found up there. And, um, and one has to realize too that a lot of these areas that are slated for drilling are actually public domain. So I think you know, people should be aware of what's going on because these are the last remaining wilderness areas that will be completely changed.